Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest episode of You Deserve Fresh Lettuce. I am your co-host, Rachel. And I'm Daya. And today we're going to be talking about gold, gold diggers. diggers. And asking the question, are you a gold digger? Are we gold diggers? And is it bad to be a gold digger? Right. We're going to talk about let's it. Let's talk about this. What do you think? Um, I think it just depends on who you talk to. I think there are people that obviously would prefer someone that's already established, well-to-do, yes has their own stuff, um, and sometimes, you know, you see all those um, YouTube memes or, like, the jokes where, you know, the guy's, like, in this so-called Lamborghini or in, like, a Ferrari, and then the girl's, like, not interested until she sees him roll up in one of those cars, mm -hmm. and then they just stake her out, and they're like, you're a gold digger. Yeah. Um, and I think that it goes without saying, like, sometimes you assume, you know what they say about assuming, makes an ass out of you and me. And me. Um, that the person has a lot of money because of the car or because of the way that they're dressed without realizing that they're trying to keep up with the Joneses or keep yeah. up with the lifestyle or the image. Yeah. They're faking so, it to make it, right? Exactly. I, I don't I don't know. What are your thoughts? So here's the thing. Um, I have some people close in my circle that are family. Some of them are just friends. Mm -hmm. And they, the, the guys... And mm -hmm. they went out of their way. They came from nothing, maybe. They went out of their way to, to build something for themselves, start businesses and all these kinds of things. And, you know, guys, you know, if you're that close to them, will tell you a lot of it is when they're young to get the girl. Right. They have this idea in their head of like one day, you know, when, I, when I grow up, big. I'm going to get money and then I'm going to get this, you know, the bad, you know, bitch bad or whatever. Car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or the nice car and all this kind of stuff. You know, the, the money, what did they say? The mm -hmm. money, the power, the, yeah. the woman, all this kind of stuff. So then they get there. Yeah. And then when the girls start coming at them like flies because they're attracting yep. women that like that kind of stuff, they're like nothing but gold diggers. Exactly. Yeah, that's so true. Right? It's so true. Then they're complaining that everyone's a gold digger. Right. But I think I think women too, though, they'll size you up. Meaning they see that you're with a man and, and he rolls up in a nice car and then all of a sudden they look at you you're dressed well, you look good, smell good, well put together. The girl's like, what does she have that I want? And mm -hmm. they don't really necessarily look at the guy, they look at the woman that he's with. And they That's assume, again, that he's taking care of you and he's buying you, you know, the nice bag or the nice shoes. I remember I was out at dinner um, with someone that I was dating and the, the server, this is like our second date, by the way, and I'm always, you know, kind of dressed nice. And yeah. At least I think I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and the girl goes, looks at the looks at my date and says, "Wow, great job! I love her bag." And I just didn't want to make her mm. look silly or make him look bad too by saying, "What makes you think he bought it for me?" And he was a little bit older, so I'm sure she probably assumed that, you know, he had bought it for me. Granted, we'd only gone on our like second date. And when she walked away, I'm like, it's funny how she, <laughs> I think like the word of the day is assumption, assumption. assuming, assuming. and uh, she assumed that he bought it for me and it was kind of irritating, but that's the way it is. The girl size you up. I feel like in just particularly in that situation, I would have been like, he has really great taste in bags and women. Apparently. Yeah. yeah that would have been a good Clearly. comeback. Clearly. Clearly. I, Clearly. I just was like shocked. I'm like. Okay, now I look like a gold digger, though I'm not. But, you know, there's just so many different, like, takes on that. Yeah. There's so many takes on that. I know for me, this is my view. And I think it really depends um, on your age, the age in which you're listening to this episode. That's true. Um, because speaking to, like, my grandmother or women that are much older, mm -hmm. you know, way ahead, have kind of lived life, seen, learned, and everything. And they'll say things like, the first one's always for love. The second one is almost for. always for money. And the third one's almost always for companionship. Mm. And I remember thinking, I'm not going to be married three times. Yeah. Right? No, like, right. I don't want to get married three times to have all that in right. one. I want all of it in one package. But what ends up happening is when you're young, you often do just follow your heart. I mean, I got married really young. We talked yeah. about this. You were of young, course, too. I was. Yeah. And then you kind of follow your heart or whatever the situation is. It's a little bit different. But when you're wiser. Right. Right. And you're looking around, everything about your female instinct mm -hmm. is to choose someone who can provide. Or can has or has the ability, right? Because yeah. I always say ambition goes a long oh, yeah. way. You're a you're a potential. I everybody has like the, the potential. I think everyone has potential unless they don't yes. see the potential within them. 
Um, I think we as women have the ability to empower a man to say, you can absolutely do that and more. And yeah. I think sometimes we, we need that. We need that, that person, whether it's a friend or a lover or not. You just need someone to tell you, hey, I know we can do this. And especially when it's a partnership, I think that there's nothing better than to kind of, you know, kind of have a meeting of the minds and kind of yeah. empower each other. But um, I, I do true. I do have... I do have that where I do see potential in people and I, I will say I saw potential in in my ex-husband yeah. and and uh, and now I think when people when you date people and they have money they'll treat you like they have money and you're there because they think that you are there because of their money when it's not even like that yeah like you have your own money weird tests yes that it is that take place and you can't blame them you really can't blame them at the end of the day but you're right though, if I really kind of reset my thinking and go all the way back, even like the guys that I even considered when I right. was growing up, it was like I saw the potential. Even as yes. young, it was like I understood there was like these guys over here, maybe cholos with tattoos or right. anything, and I didn't see potential right. versus this guy is an honor student. They want right. him to be the auditorium, he plays sports, he has a scholarship, exactly, which was how my... Um, ex-husband was in school when I knew him so to me I saw like a rising star right uh, he was a foster kid so to me I thought oh my gosh with the little support and TLC can you imagine so you're absolutely right now that I really think about it because it was the potential of the him, potential uh, of him and but you know being young it was understandable as soon as I moved out of that marriage I wasn't looking for potential anymore. Mm. I was looking for stability. Someone that's established. And, and that's established. Because you don't want to be like their mom. I'm not going to be there to hear their ideas from scratch while they're in a bedroom that they rent and having these ideas. That guy, I'm not saying he's not going to make it. Right. He may very well, but at the end of the day, let me tell you something I've learned mm -hmm. from observation and just different things. The guy that he is when he doesn't have money, the guy that he is on the way up is a, such a different guy than the guy he is when he has the money. 100%. And I say that because when he's sitting there, if you're listening to this going, yeah, Rachel, but my man, you know, he loves me and he's like you and me and you're my day one. Let me tell you, he believes that at the moment. Right. So everything he's telling you mm -hmm. in the moment, he believes it. Right. But until he has those commas and zeros in his bank account and those foreign cars. He will totally treat you like, like that, depending. But you know what? I, I heard Tony Robbins say, the way that you are with money or without money, you will be 10 times. So if you're a giving oh, yeah. person, you will give 10 times more. Yes. If you're arrogant, you're going to be arrogant yes. 10 times more. And you can kind of gauge people because of the way that they treat other people when they have something yeah. or they don't have anything. Or if they get pissed off right away, you can kind of see it. And so there's this like power trip that they have. Yep. And I've dated guys it's that an ego. It's an ego thing for sure. And I've dated guys that have had nothing and I've dated guys that have a lot. And you could see the difference. And sometimes they they think that you want to be with them because of their money. And you know, you're like, actually I don't I really don't care about your money. But there are girls that do. There are girls that do. There so are girls that do. I can definitely say that I'm someone that it is important right. if the person is um, financially stable. Mm -hmm. And then I don't just mean he makes 75000 or or 100000 a year and he bought mm -hmm. himself a cute little three-bedroom house. That's not exactly what I'm talking about. Right. You know, at the end of the day, even the Bible says you got to be equally yoked. You know, if you're excelling and you're all the way over here um, and he's here, it's going to be really tough anyways right and i know that you've had similar situations even like with your home and once you really invest in your lifestyle right. the guys get kind of weird but they get intimidated yeah but i don't consider that gold digging okay so to me it's like i don't consider that gold digging and then you might ask but will you only date guys with money and the answer is yes okay i'm not afraid to say it and it's yes because of that same thing if right. i'm in i'm a middle-aged woman right. and so what do I want the second chapter of my life to look like? Right. I don't want it to look like struggle. Right. I want it to look like the, the, the smooth sailing. I want right. to be able to blast off to Palm Springs on a Tuesday and not have to worry about the little kids or, you know what, he has to go to a nine to five and ask for time off. Like sure. none of that is interesting to me because I don't live that life. I get it. No, and, and it's kind of true. I mean, a lot of the, the guys that I have dated, they're, you know, they work for themselves. They may yeah. not be... They may not be rich, but they, they do for themselves. So they're entrepreneurs. Some of them have not been. Some of them have. And the ones that have had a lot of money, they, they think they, they can treat me some type of way, you know. And, and I'm, I'm just, 
you know, I think because of life and understanding that it's it's such a short life. We have such a short lifespan here, you I know? know. So, uh, I mean, without being morbid, but it's the truth. And then you really put life into perspective and you say, yeah, those things are important, but they're not as important if someone doesn't treat me right. They're not oh, as important yeah. if the person's cheating on me. They're not as important if I can't trust the guy. Right. I mean, the money's great. The shoes are great. The bags are great, um, I guess. Uh, but in reality, when you break all that stuff down, it's not that great if the, they think that they can talk to you a certain way and you're now like you're, you're at their mercy because they pay the bills or they take care of your lifestyle. Yes. And if you should leave them, what are you going to do with yourself? Because you've been so dependent on them. Yes. And that's what I have a little bit of an issue with. And so for me, whenever I start seeing them like, you know, taking care of certain things and then they're like, well, I pay for dinner or I pay for this. I'm not saying I'm a gold digger, but if you're going to take me out, I mean, that's kind you of pay. the least you could do is yeah. pay for dinner. Um, not to be rude. And there's nothing wrong with sometimes we as women taking the tab, you know, like get a little coffee, you know, pay for lunch once in a while. I think it's a give and take, but not to where he's like, well, yeah, I paid for this, this, this and that because they just want to make sure that you know. Yeah, I think that, yeah, you're exactly right. And as far as how they treat you, I think that um, if anyone, I don't care what they make, is treating you like an option, right? you're in trouble. You know, exactly. at the end of the day, you're in trouble. And I think the difference, like, okay, if we sit there and break down, what's the difference between, like, us that we're discussing or, like, or describing and an actual gold digger? And to mm. me, what I've kind of seen is a gold digger will be with the guy no matter what. They're not attracted to the dude. They don't even really like the guy. Um, or they might be with the guy and it's like, he's a jerk and they're just going to put up with it because he has money. Right. Um, I think that a lot of that, it's like, there's like jersey chasers. I right. mean, there's even programs. I'm not promoting this. This is not mm. sponsored by this. Mm. But there's even like little like meetups and teachers that will teach you like little schools. Really? Um, they're gold digging schools. Wow. Yeah, in LA. And they mm. literally hold, they pull it up on the screen this is a new athlete. He just got drafted to the Lakers. And then they give you an idea of where he's hanging out and all this kind of stuff and what he looks like so that you wow. can spot him and be like, oh, okay, I like that one. Or this one hang goes to my same gym or whatever. And there's women that are going out of their way just to land the money. Wow. Um, and so that is, that's definitely, they're, they're putting all this extra energy Into that. in order to specifically find a guy with money. With money. And to me, to me, that's a gold digger. I agree. I, I had a, a situation. I was in um, Laguna Beach and there we went to like friends of friends were like, hey, we're going to go to a buddy's house. So I was like, okay, awesome. So we get to the buddy's house and let me tell you, Rachel, this was not a buddy's house. I mean, like I expected some cute little Laguna house. No, this thing was like, like a palace <laughs> in Laguna and it overlooked all of the beach. Ooh. It was so beautiful. Ooh. The guy that owned this property Looked like he had literally been one of those Orange County guys that like had cut his like oh, he yeah. was super injected. I was even not sure if he was a female, yeah. but point is he was with a girl and the girl was young and very beautiful, cute body. But let me tell you something: that girl or that woman was so insecure that I mean she was kind of thinking that I was trying to get on on her man. And everyone that was there was pretty much trying to get on him. Why? Because he has a lot of money. Yeah. And he probably thinks he could treat her some type of way. And he probably does provide some type of lifestyle for her. However, I'm sure she pays for it. I'm sure it's because nothing in life Everything is for has free. A price. Everything has a price. And unless, like I always say, unless you can kind of separate it and, and make it a business deal. Like, well, he's providing me a life. And... I know he likes, he's a messy eater. He likes to eat outside the plate and I don't care. Then if that's the way you get up, then if that's your get up, then that's, then that's okay. If you're willing to walk away, you know what I mean? If you're willing to uphold your integrity, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like require respect and right. all these kinds of things. And the guy happens to have money. Right. It's, it's a very different scenario than, um, than, you know, gold digging in that, oh my God, you're just sitting there being completely demeaned because any little skirt that walks past your man, he's just going to be right there in front of his buddy. Yeah. like, look at that. Oh my God, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. um, what comes to mind is like Wolf of Wall Street, you know, yes. when the blonde girl walks into mm -hmm. the party and his wife 
is you know, right, is there. right there, right? And no so, respect. Yeah. And at the end, when the wife catches on, she's like, is this the girl from the party? You know, oh, and yeah. it's like you see the mortification on her face. Like because she knew. That as was women, we all know. It's it's not that they look at you as another woman and go, oh, my God, they're threatened. They pick up on the way that their man is reacting. It could be the most subtle. My ex-husband, it was he would clear his throat. Mm. And so if he clears his throat, I already knew. That you're I like, knew which one it was. The one. You're like, it's yeah. gonna be that one right yeah. there. Yeah. And so it just becomes really tough. But if you do land a guy with money, um, you know, you're gonna just if you just go. This is all nice. He can right. he, he can provide this really nice life. But what does he do for my soul? What does he do for my spirit? Exactly. What does he do for my heart, exactly. my mind, my body, whatever? And when you lean into that and put your processes and mm-hmm. your requirements and everything mm-hmm. in that, you're gonna do okay because. There's lots of really great, good guys Mm -hmm. that are actually very successful. So true. But I think it has to be guys that are already been, they they have been successful for a very long time. It can't be someone on the up and up or someone in the up, like someone that's barely up and coming. Because let me tell you, they're going to treat you some type of way. And and I I always have stories. I'm like Mother Goose. I always say that. (laughs) But um, I'm driving, because I was driving, um, I was driving a sports car. And I'm coming down the 71. It's late at night. I go with a girlfriend of mine. It's a two-seater car. Driving down the 71. And it's no one's there. If, if anyone that lives in California knows where the 71 is, 71 freeway, <laughs> it's like nobody's ever there. So all of a sudden, I'm, I'm going down the road. And like a group of girls in this like car start just like swerving and screaming and yelling. So in my mind, I'm thinking... Do I have a flat tire? The, the windows are completely tinted and blacked out, so you cannot see inside the car at all. So I look at my girlfriend, and I'm like, what's up? Are we, are we okay? I'm like, I'm checking all the gauges. I'm like, do I have a flat tire? Nope. So I roll down the window. We slow down, roll down the window, and I'm like, what's up? And then she thought I was a guy. It's like 2 mm. in the morning, okay? We're coming home from L.A., and all of a sudden, I'm like, this girl thinks there's guys in the car. And, and she's like, girl gone wild. Yeah, they're like, like hey, pull over, pull over. Yeah. And I didn't get it until afterwards. I roll up the window mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, she thought it was a guy driving she this car. She was fangirling with her Yeah. Friends. But see, that's the way it is. See, these girls, they stake yes. out the guys. They, they stake are, them out. They're like ambulance chasers. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> yeah, I know yeah. there's a guy in there. And then when yes. she realized it was a girl, she's like, oh, just kidding yeah. but you know what that's just the way it is now i think like if you if you go back i even in the bible it says that women and and if you go back in time women always looked for the hunter the, yep. the main guy the, the buff guy they always wanted the, the guy strong, the strong buff guy yeah and that's always been that's always been the case it's yeah i just think it just depends on the game plan for you like if you know you're like i'm gonna get this guy because i want his money i think that when you set that intention, it's gonna backfire. Yeah. If you set an intention to say, you know what, he's well to do, but he's an amazing guy, and I could see where we could grow even further than this, that's a little different, in my opinion. It is. I don't know if you agree with me. No, I absolutely agree. Listen, if you're one of the three guys that listens to this podcast, we actually yeah. know it's more, which is kind of cool. I think it might be more. Yeah. It might be like six It now. might be like six of you now, Maybe. welcome. Okay. But if you're listening to this going, huh, mm-hmm. let me just tell you. You heard us say we prefer, at least me, I prefer a guy that well, has it yeah, together. Yeah, you don't want a broke guy, of yeah. course. And you know, so I'm it, not going to stay here in front either. It yeah. does It does matter. So what we can say to you is yeah. make your money. Go get those cars. Go do all the things. And when you're ready to have one, one dish and not be at the buffet all the time, because that one dish, that one girl makes you feel like you want to be a better man, makes you just feel mm-hmm. really great, yep. um, doesn't cause a lot of drama for you or whatever, it just works. Mm-hmm. Forget about the fact that you met her when you pulled up at the valet and she saw right. your car. Like, forget about that. At the end of the day, you also have to let go because mm-hmm. some of these guys, they stay in the in test mode. They're in right. constant, they have a girl in front of them they know and they feel it like, huh, she's different. Huh, you know what? Like, this is what I've been saying I wanted. Yeah. Huh, huh. And you know what they do? They just test you the whole way. And those tests actually poke holes in the freaking relationship. Absolutely. To the point where a good woman is going to go, I don't need to put up with this just because he has money. And then they walk away. Right. And then the next girl that comes along, you realize she just 
wants your she's money. She's there for the good time. Yeah, she's yeah. there for the flights and, yeah. and the travel. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, you can kind of gauge people, though. Even for me, I, I could tell you, I can tell after a while when I'm being used. Like, you can kind of mm. see it. Like, where they're now coming, they want to just like, oh, do you mind if I just stay at your place because it's closer for me to go to, you know, from here to San Diego to go fishing. Oh, you're like a pit stop. Yeah, so you're like a pit stop now. And after a while, you're like, okay, so am I just your halfway point to get to the next place uh, wherever you're going? Yeah. And yeah. then after a while, you're like, you know what? I, I deserve better. Like, I, I don't deserve, deserve this. I deserve fresh lettuce. <laughs> and so I think at the end of the day, I think you can kind of gauge people. If a girl's a gold digger, if she's asking you for money and – can you pay my bills and can you pay for this and you can't need you pay for that you can kind of see that and if you're a giver and you don't mind doing that because yeah. there's guys that love to be wanted and seeked yeah. and needed if you like that then that's great but i i think it's different when someone needs you versus when someone's using you yes and that's a big you could you could feel that your spirit nudges you and says yes. hey you're being used you can even feel the difference between want and need Exactly. Because that's something that I really look at. It's like, does this person want me or are they now needing me for X, Y, Z? And right. so then the, there has to be a balance because we all like to be needed to some extent. Right. But there has to even be a balance. But when it comes with money, when you talk about money, so you might be watching this going, I do want a guy with money. How do yeah, I get one? Yeah. How do we get one? How do you How get, get one? How do you get a guy one? with money? I, I, think, I think the way that you get a guy with money is you got to mirror what you are, what yep. you want. So, you know, you have to be ambitious. You got to go out there. You got to work hard. You got to hustle too. And he has to see that. You can't just be on the couch expecting for him to just to arrive. And, and you're like, oh, I landed myself a guy with money. Because even the guy with money eventually will get tired of that too. Yep. So I think as long as, you know, you, you mirror what you want. If you want someone that's, that's fit, if you want someone that right. works out, if you want someone that, you know, you know, likes to travel, likes to go out, then you kind of have to mirror that a little bit. Yeah. And, um... And that's that's my opinion with when it comes to that. I, I'll add to that um, because you should definitely, you know, I do always say too, become that what you wish to attract. Right. Um, and so you, some people say, oh my God, like I want someone that doesn't have walls and I want someone that's affectionate mm. and I want someone that's outgoing. Are you, do you have walls? Are you affectionate? Are you, Are you outgoing? outgoing? So many people claim that they just want real love, but they don't know how to give it. Right. And it's a huge block and that's a whole other yeah. podcast. Right. But when we're talking about people with money and you take the mirroring part, but you also got to put yourself in it. Right. And so that could be socially, that could be going to restaurants where you know that, mm -hmm. you know, high level people are circulating. It also means start listening to audiobooks and get your conversation skills way up. Oh off. my gosh, yes, Rachel. The database, Absolutely. The database needs to be completely fed, I like agree. constantly fed. 100%. So when someone says, you know, I went to Peru mm. to seek my, to enhance my spirituality, if you're like, what spirituality? Is that like psychics? Right. You're off. You, you're, you're, the, you're off the if, conversation. If you look good, there might still be a little moment you guys might have. But beyond that, I guarantee you it's over. Because guys are imagining, and I've heard this straight from horses' mouths. Mouth, mm. They're imagining what you, as you're speaking and laughing and walking across the room and all these things. They're looking at how you dress, mm -hmm. how you carry yourself, how you speak. Because they're imagining already, when I go meet my coworkers or my colleagues or, you know, whatever, the, my family... They're imagining what does she look like right. when she's in the passenger seat of my Rolls Royce. Is this a fit or not? Mm -hmm. There's all these things that go through Absolutely. their mind, right? Absolutely. You become a puzzle piece in their big picture. Right. And so mirror that what you want to become, but yep. definitely put yourself in the environment right. where you know that they're at and also start thinking about the, the conversations mm -hmm. and your wardrobes. You know, it could be expensive. But, you know, if you get a little bit of money that you save up, buy a couple staple pieces right. that you know you can really doll yourself up and mm -hmm. go out there. Absolutely. I agree with you. And I think that a lot of the times we do it even. I mean, when I sit across from someone, I'll look at their table manners, how they speak to the server, yes. the way that they ask for the check, for water, for whatever. And that's indicative of how well, you know, how, how they carry yes. themselves. and. Can I go to dinner with them or if I should go to an event, am I going to be embarrassed that he's holding, you know, his uh, his fork and his knife like a Neanderthal? And that is, it's always kind of embarrassing because he's representing you. I always say the person that you're with, even my children, I'm like, you're a representation of me. Do you understand? Yeah. <laughs> so 
please act right because otherwise, you know, you're not being a good representative. And I think that the person that you choose to have in your life, they're they're representing you, one hundred percent. They're they're representing. You know, when once you walk into that door, you know it's like the first impressions, and they're rep- representing you at a hundred percent. So, yeah. I mean, it, it all kind of matters. I know that we're probably going on a little bit of a tangent when it comes <laughs> to gold digging. I think that if you know that you're seeking someone with you know high level, you're you're seeking a high level man with a lot of money. Um, just know that you may get him, but you will pay for it. And, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that you should go and date the broke guy, no, but you should date the person that maybe is a, a little bit of an underdog, but you see the ambition in him. And if you're ambitious, you can push a man to high limits. Like literally, it's like, you know, it, it's like getting champagne and just like shaking it up and you yes. guys can both, you know, you yes. enjoy the champagne and, and, and the fruits of your labor if you guys can see that. How can I add value to him and how yep. can he add value to me? Rather than saying, how can he take care of me? No, yeah. how do we add value to each other? And I think that if you could look at it that way, then it wouldn't be a problem for you to get, you know, a high level man. Exactly. So it's not always how they start. If, if you can be the day one, I would say this. If you're over the age of 20, 21 and you're entering a relationship, absolutely look for potential. Right. Absolutely. 100%. Positively look for potential because these guys that we're talking about that are in their 40s and 50s, they have a ton of money. They didn't have that in their 20s, but right. they were grinding or they were already yeah. having conversations with whoever about one day I want to have this. There's a man named Ed Milet oh, um, yes. who's really big on social media. I personally just love his content um, and his energy. And he's a, he's a married guy. He ma- he married his high school sweetheart. Wow. And he used to take her. I think they lived in Chino in California. And they, he used to take her all the way to Laguna Beach to the cove on the cliff and say one day I'm going to live in a house. I'm going to put you in a house like that. Right. And she was just like, what in the world? Mm. And let me tell you, he didn't do it in his 20s. And he didn't do it in his 30s. But when you ask where do they live now, they have not only one of those houses on the Mm. cliff on the ocean that's massive, they have a desert house and a lake house and a mountain, you know what I mean? And boats and cars and all this kind of stuff that she's been there since day one. Doesn't mean she hasn't gone through stuff with him because I don't know their marriage. I'm not going to pretend they're Christians. Mm. I don't want to talk about it. But that was, she probably saw potential in him. Absolutely. And so if you're a young woman, absolutely go to the potential. But don't just go to ride his coattails. Go to level up. Go to say, let's do this. Let's do this together. Yeah. Yeah. And if you build something together, then that right there is phenomenal. And even then, though, you know, nothing guarantees anything either way. But I think that, you know what... uh, Teamwork makes the dream work rather, you know, because let me tell you, if you do get with, if you do date a man that ha- is a high level man, he's going to let you know he's high level. He's going to let you know that he paid for dinner mm-hmm. or he took you on vacation. He paid for everything. You're not going to get away with it for free. If he pays for your rent, if he pays for your car, whatever it is, if he's financing your life, me, he's going to let you know. And yeah. there's nothing worse than someone throwing that in your face. Yeah. And in my opinion, I feel that, yeah, I, I definitely, maybe you're right. I don't want to date someone that's broke, but I definitely can see when someone is an entrepreneur that has more potential. And I feel like that we can work together and we could rise up to the occasion. Mm. And that has, I think, more value than coming in to this big, you know, grandiose house and knowing that he's going to throw it in your face, that you're with him because of what he has. Well, here's this. I'm going to leave you with this. Go ahead. If you don't marry well, make sure you're going to divorce well. Because you do not have a guarantee. <laughs> Some divorce so attorney on TikTok might not, said that. Yeah, yes. really? Yeah. If you, if you meet him and he has potential, there's a good chance you could divorce well. If but you hopefully don't you in, don't get divorced. We're not trying to make you get divorced. Because we, we are advocates for staying married. We are. But, but if, the stats are. The stats are. They speak for themselves. They, they speak they for really themselves. They really do. They really do. But and just be smart, ladies. Be smart. Be smart. Be and smart. be willing to chip in, roll up your sleeves, and help that man build himself and you a fortune. Oh, absolutely. So with that being said, if you should date a man that has a lot of money, well, just be ready to know that you're going to pay for it or build him <laughs> up. One or the other. But either way, that's all we got for today. And cheers to whatever you decide to do. Cheers. cheers. Have a good one. Salut. Take care.